Abba, we are here. We are here for you, Jesus. We are here, Jesus. We are here, we are here for you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we are here. Holy Spirit, we are here. We are here for you, Father. We are here, Father. Father, we are here. We are here for you. Boys, please wave. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I welcome you to this special week. Hallelujah. It's a week of mansion Christianity. It's a week of mansion Christianity. Quickly open with me to the book of John chapter 14. The book of John chapter 14. Hallelujah. The 
Parika kabaye ke bosu kriya mayiga. Yes, yes, yes. I'm reading from Halet. Please. Halet, I want you to read from chapter 1. Chapter 14 of John, verse 1 to 4. John, John 14. 14, 1 to 4. Okay. So the reading is from John 14, verses 1 to 4, and I'm reading from the King James Version. Let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there he may be also. Verse four. And Verse whether four. I go, he know, and the way he know. Here ends a portion of God's word. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sister. The Lord bless you mightily for the word of God you just said for us. Amen. Let not your heart be troubled. You are not created for solitude. You are not created for loneliness. Let not your heart be troubled. Just one key. What you need is that key. In my father's house, there are many mansions. From the beginning, God has ordained you as a mansion Christian. You are a mansion Christian. God ordained you to be a mansion Christian. The meaning of a mansion is a big place with all imaginable comforts. A place of comfort, a place of rest, a place of provision, a place of abundance. No affliction, a place of no affliction. You are a mansion Christian. Let not your heart be troubled. A mansion is like a palace. You are a palatial Christian. Many, many, many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. Don't live your I, don't live your life on earth here like a Lazarus. Lazarus had no roof over his head. Lazarus had no food even to eat. God, he died a righteous man and was carried by angels to heaven. Hallelujah. He was carried by angels to heaven. Hallelujah. A mansion Christian, that's who you are. In a mansion, you can suffer loneliness. A mansion has many servants. A mansion has many rooms. 
You can't live alone in immersion. By the word of God descending on this altar today, may your life be catapulted from every affliction of loneliness. In the name of Jesus. If the master told us that we are martial Christians, you don't need to suffer martialless Christianity here on earth. You don't need to suffer a martialless Christianity like Lazarus here on earth. That desired blissful matrimony that you desire. It's a mansion matrimony. A matrimony of no lack. No lack of children. No lack of money. No lack of materials. You will not enter into a slave matrimony in the name of Jesus. You are a mansion Christian. You must end up in mansion, mansion matrimony. Many mansions, yours is among them in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Yesterday I was sharing with you from the book of Second Peter, chapter one, and I was talking. about the balance of it. I was talking about the balance of it. So listen to what I want to share now. You can write this question down. Why do Christians write it down? Why do Christians suffer lack and want? Why do Christians suffer lack and want? In the presence of prosperity of unbelievers. Why do Christians suffer lack and want in the presence, comparative presence of the prosperity of people who don't know God? To answer that question, we go back to the foundation. The almighty God is a universal God. Is not just a God of Christians. He is the creator of the whole universe. After he created the whole universe, he created the law to guide the universe. Anybody, Christian or not Christian, that obey such universal laws will reap the harvest of such universal laws. Prosperity is not a Christian doctrine. It's a universal doctrine. Your God is a universal God. Is not only a God for Christians, is the creator of all things. And he issues law, he made laws to guide and control all his creation. We are saved by grace through faith. 
we are saved by grace through faith. What does that mean? Faith is the key. Faith is the key that opens that mansion of salvation. We are saved by grace through faith. It is the key of faith that opens the mansion of salvation. Don't forget the question I asked you. Why do Christians suffer lack and want in the comparative presence of prosperity of unbelievers? We are saved by grace through the key of faith in Christ. Grace is not only available for Christians. The grace of God is all around us, all over the world, everywhere in the cosmos. The grace of God abounds. If there is no grace, There can be no salvation. I'm taking you to the foundation. The foundation of stagnation, of marital stagnation. Why do Christians, male and female, suffer marital stagnation? When unbelievers are getting married, when unbelievers are having children. Let's go back to that foundation. In that foundation, take note. Number one, there is grace abounding. Abundant grace all over. That grace is not only available to save. Sister Chingere, Sister Sorry. Chingere, Daddy, Daddy, I'm listening. I want to ask you a question. Okay, sir. From your own understanding, what All right, is sir. this? Grace is an unmerited favor from God, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Hallelujah. Our sister from Nigeria defined grace as unmerited favor. Hallelujah.
Let me tell you what grace is. Grace is unexpected. You can write it down. The grace of God. It's unexpected. Undeserved. On hand. And unending and unmerited favor. Grace means mercy. Oh, grace means love. For God so loved the world. God didn't just love Christians. Until that mentality is changed, you will not wake up. God didn't just love Christians. He so loved the world. His grace of salvation is everywhere. And he has given everybody a free choice, a free will. To choose that salvation or despise and ignore that salvation. Grace is love. Grace is mercy. Hallelujah. Grace means generosity. Grace means kindness. And never forget it. Grace is free. Grace is a gift, a free gift. Grace is not a right. You are free to claim rights on any other issue, but when it comes to the subject of grace, you have no right. You don't deserve it. You don't earn it. It's not a salary. It's not wages. It's not income that people can earn. It's content, undeserved, unexpected. Unending, unending love of God. We are saved by grace through the key of faith in Christ. Until you understand the mystery of grace, you can't walk into blissful matrimony. And grace has levels. Hallelujah. Grace has levels. Grace is not dependent on works. Hello. Grace is not dependent on efforts. Grace is not dependent on labor and sweating. Grace depends, depends only on divine law. Everybody says divine law. Grace is dependent on divine law. We are saved by that love, by that grace, by that mercy, by that generosity, undeserved, unmerited, through the key of faith in God, faith in Christ. The house of grace is a special mansion. 
in house called this is a special mansion. That mansion does not need repainting. That mansion does not need renovation. That mansion cannot be rebuilt. It's a special mansion. In my father's house, there are many mansions. All you need to enter the mansion of grace is the key of faith. The key of faith opens the door to the mansion. The key of faith opens the door to the mansion of grace. Listen to this truth. It's possible to lose the key of faith. It is possible for the key of faith to get lost from your hand. When people lose the key of faith, you say, ah, that brother, he has backslid it. The key of faith is no longer in his hand. So it's possible. It's possible to lose the key of faith. And it's permissible. Are we still together? Every time you lose the key of faith, you are denied access into the mansion of grace. Every key of faith in peaceful matrimony that you have ever lost upon this mountain by this fresh function this morning. Praise A new key of faith this morning in the name of Jesus. When the key of faith is locked, you go for another one. That's why we make another another type of water call. Come and rededicate your life to Christ. Why do somebody that was already born again? Why do we call them to come and rededicate? Because they have lost their key of faith. They have been denied access to the mansion of grace. Hallelujah. So when we make calls, hotter calls for people to come and rededicate their life to Christ, is because they were formerly born again, the key of faith, they got lost, they backslided, and they were convicted again a second time by the Holy Ghost to come out and rededicate. They were formerly dedicated, but now they are coming out to be rededicated back to Christ. Those are the people that lost the key of faith and were denied access into the mansion of grace. That key can be lost. But the house of grace, the mansion of grace, is ever there. It doesn't need repenting. The mansion of grace is ever there. It doesn't need repenting. It doesn't need renovation. The Lord Jesus has prepared it for us. And that mansion of grace is many, plenteous, grandiose, stupendous. Listen to this one.
Grace is greater than faith. Did you hear what I just said? Grace is greater than faith. Faith is an awesome weapon in the battle of life. To step into the mansion of breakthrough, you need the key of faith. So it's a great weapon. But that key is not sufficient. Grace is greater than faith. The content of a mansion and that mansion is greater than the key. If you lose the key, go for another key or change the locks. You can't change the house. You can't change the mansion. It's a special mansion. The mansion of grace is a special mansion. You can't change it. But if you lose the key of grace of faith, that grants you access into the mansion of grace. What do you do? Go for another key or change the locks. Once the locks is changed, you have new access. The God you are serving is not a God for Christians alone. He is the whole mind. The creator of all things. He's a universal God. He created the whole universe. And he has universal laws. Anybody in that universe that obeys his universal law will reap universal harvest. That's why an unbeliever can be rich and you are still poor. These are universal law of state, time, and harvest. Who helped me with this place? Universal laws of state, time, and harvest. Hallelujah. Universal law of winter and summer. Universal laws. Don't come questioning God. Why are unbelievers rich? And you, a fighting believer, is poor. Your God is a universal God that has universal laws. As many as obey that universal laws, he tap into universal harvest. So it's possible to be a Christian. It is possible to be a Christian and disobey universal laws. So let me tell you this. Christianity is a covenant. Christianity is a covenant of exemption. Christianity is a covenant of exemption. What do I mean by exemption? Exemption from universal suffering. Christianity is a covenant of exemption. Many people have not seen Christianity as a covenant. They saw it, many of us, we saw Christianity as a religion. Religion of one again. It's more than that. Every true Christian 
is the covenant child of God. But many of us, we are not walking in that covenant of exemption. So there are two basic laws of life. Two basic laws of life. Where I'm taking you back to the foundation so that you can see the reason of marriage, the reason for marital stagnation. Hallelujah. Two laws of life. The first law is the universe that covers the universe. The second law is the law of exemption. The law of covenant exemption. As many as are covenant children of God, as many that are in the covenant with God. They can be exempted from punishment, from universal punishment. Hallelujah. Are we still together? Take note of this basic fact I'm giving you. I need to take you back to the foundation. Once you know what is wrong in the foundation, you will correct your steps and begin to walk in the covenant. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a covenant of exemption. Exemption from universal punishments. Something else. Something is happening all over the world now. They called it coronavirus, COVID-19. There is no country in the world that has not been affected one way or the other. In fact, the biggest and greatest and most powerful countries of the world. So if bigger greater countries, powerful countries have been affected. Don't even talk about lesser countries. When you look at that list, you will see America number one, you will see Russia number two, you will see all the European countries there. So you can imagine whatever universal trouble can afflict the most powerful countries, how much more lesser countries. But there is a mystery of covenant exemption. It's not a popular mystery. It's not. That's why it's, it looks so strange to many of us. You mean it is possible for a covenant child of God to be exempted from every plague and pestilence troubling the whole world. It is possible. Don't forget what I'm saying. I said covenant child. I'm not just talking of ordinary Christian. I'm talking of that Christian that walk in covenant with God. God made that law for everybody in the universe. There's only one thing that can accept you from that universal law. When you plug into the covenant, into the socket of the covenant, then you can be exempted. A thousand and one times this one was demonstrated in the Bible. It is normal for snake and viper to bite anybody.
after the drama in the Garden of Eden, God placed a curse upon the serpent. God placed a curse upon man. From that time on, the serpent has been bruising the heel of humanity. That's a universal cause, like a universal law. Are you still here? He said, Dust shall thou hit. Don't forget, man was made from dust. Dust thou had unto those that shall, shall thou reform. So every time a serpent or a viper or whatever name you call it bites a man, what the serpent was doing is to hit dust. This morning, I want to I want you to lay your right hand upon your chest and make this covenant declaration with me. I am not a dust. I am a living soul, born of the Spirit of God. I am not a cheap meat for any serpent. I am not a food for any dragon. I am a living spirit. Born of the Spirit of God. I am not a dust. I am not a meat for any serpent. I am not a food for any dragon. I am immersed in the blood of Jesus. That is the blood of vengeance that avenges me of all adversities that avenges me of all my adversaries. I am not a dust. I am a living soul. I am a living spirit. Therefore, every serpent of marital delay, every serpent of marital affliction, Every serpent of marital stagnation, I am not your victim. Therefore, get out of my life. Get out of my way. In Jesus' mighty name, I am a living spirit. I am not a dust. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Very important. I'm taking you back to the foundation. Paul was gathering sticks after a shipwreck to start a fire. As he threw the sticks into the fire, a viper. One drank his hand. He shook up that venomous beast into fire. And everybody around were expecting it. Anytime a viper, viper is so fast. If a viper passed around your hand, it must have beaten several times. They were expecting him to fall down and die. When nothing happened to him after several hours, they said no. This one is not a man. That the covenant of exemption from a universal cause that says the viper, the serpent, shall break the heel of man. The serpent is free to bite anybody. The dragon of coronavirus is free to afflict any nation. 
So once you understand your roots, that you have a covenant of exemption from every tribulation, from every affliction, it's just black people. It's not for me. A thousand shall fall by their side. A thousand at their right hand. With your eyes, you will see it. I see the reward of the wicked. It shall not come near thee. That is the covenant of exemption. That is the covenant of exemption. That same covenant covers not only prosperity, it covers matrimony. It covers every activity of life. But the truth, many covenant children of God are not even working in the covenant. Quickly open to me, with me, to that popular scripture in Joshua. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 1. Hallelujah. Sister Shioma. Yes, sir. Are you in Joshua chapter 1? Yes, I am. Start reading from verse 1 for us. Okay, I'm reading from NIV. Okay. Okay. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you the Shioma from I'm... China? Yes, yes, sir. So you are you are you are you are logged in right from China. Yes. <laughs> okay. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses eight, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot. As I promised Moses, your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Yes. Do not turn, Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Yes, then yes, yes, yes. you will be prosperous and successful. Should I continue? Finalize it with verse 9. Okay. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless his word in our hearts. Amen. Hallelujah. When you read from verse 1 of Joshua chapter 1, you see all manner of exemptions. I want to, this means I don't work. This is for you self work, destiny work. Go and sit down and see what we have just read from verse 1 to 9. All those covenant exemptions have come just one thing, and that thing is in verse 8. 
this book of the law. Shall not depart out of thy mouth. Meet fellow Christian. At the onset of any trouble, the first thing your Christian brethren will be confessing is negativity. The first thing that comes out of their mouth, the book of the law have departed. They were no longer confessing the covenant. It's the afflictions they are going through. That day I'm tired. I'm, I'm frustrated. It's, it's married men that are chasing me. God's people are people of exemption, a people of covenant exemption. God's own people. Not all covenant children are covenantly exempted from verse one, from beginning of Genesis to Revelation. This book is a book of covenant exemption. All the stories are stories everywhere you see a miracle. The meaning of a miracle is exemption. Unusual. That's the meaning of a miracle. Hundred people are here. It's possible to happen to that here people. But if two people can lay hold of the key from the book of the law, from the book of exemption, and choose it to open, the grace of God will flow to their life. What is the grace? I've told you what grace of God is all about. You don't merit it. But as soon as you lay hold of that key, grace be multi, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. We are a people of exemption. A doctor met you and said, the baby in your womb is dead. That's his whole report. You also have a doctor as your father. He is the physician of Gilead. I'm not talking of bragging. I'm talking of knowledge. Do you know him? Yes, I know you know him as God Almighty. Do you know him as your own physician? Do you trust him as your own physician? Do you trust him as your own physician? Hallelujah. It's a book of exemption. Everything from verse 1 to the is a book of exemption. He said, everywhere the source of your wish I tread upon becomes your possession. Why are we not possessing? If you are not working with the covenant, there is no possession for you. In fact, it should be dispossession. There are things that happen in the life of people. And you start wondering, what kind of confession is this? They have given me quick notice. They asked me to pack out. Your father is the owner of the heaven and the earth. It's time to go back to our roots. You should be the one giving and serving quick notice to people. You should be the one. Let's walk in this covenant. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy life. You shall meditate therein day and night. Day and night. Day I'm not talking of the letters. I'm talking of the spirit of God inside the word of God. 
If you don't meditate, you can't encounter the spirit behind the letters. The letter kills it. The way forward, the only solution is to return to the covenant. The covenant that grants you exemption and grants you access to the grace, the mansion of grace. The reason you are going to pray some prayer now. The reason why some people you see them in marriages and they marriages and they are Christians, husband and wife, Christian, but their marriage is not healthy. What prayer did they pray? <laughs> prayer did they pray before they enter into their marriage? You see the prayer of God sent me a God fearing husband, sent me a God fearing wife. Send me my own husband. Send me my own wife. Is it that prayer they prayed? Did they pray for the home that is in the making? What kind of prayer did they pray? The law of seed time and harvest. What is the law of seed time and harvest? What you sow, the words that comes out of your mouth. It doesn't matter whether you don't see the harvest immediately. What have you been saying? It's what you say that you sow. And what you sow, you will reap. Have this consciousness that you are a covenant person. And you are exempted from everything that afflicts the world around you. You belong to the covenant. That covenant exempts you from every affliction. The day you have that understanding, that is the day you begin to write out a list of everything that looks like affliction around you. And you now become like a mad person because you are not talking to physical human being again. How can you write down a list and begin to talk? Anybody that pass by you, seeing you talking to a piece of paper, they said this one has gone bonkers. That's what you should be doing. Faith is the evidence of this nursing. Evidence of this hoped for. What are the things you are hoping for? Stop doing it the way the people love you. Do it differently. Let them call you. Let them say you are crazy. Is that? Forget that one. He's always talking to a piece of paper. They can't see it. Evidence of this not seen. Until your faith brings the fruit that they can see. They say, that woman, that brother, that is always talking to a piece of paper. It's not a piece of paper. You were activating your faith. Because nobody is doing it that way. You are the only one that do it that way. You will reap the result of what you say. Are we still together? You are a people of covenant exemption. These things that happen to everybody around you should not happen to you. You are a child of a covenant. A covenant keeping God. His promises are yea and amen. That is the call you serve. We stay together. Very important thing I'm telling you. Hallelujah. You belong to a covenant that exempts you. He said, no man shall be able to stand before you. Somebody now stood before you and said that we are, we are retrenching workers here. One of them came to my inbox. He said, I hear rumor. <laughs> rumor. He said, I hear rumor that they are compiling names in my workplace and my name is among it. They told me. They came to give you evil reports. As soon as you hear that rumor that they are compiling lists, and in that list, your name is among, you two go and create your whole list. 
and call it list of those to be retained. Put your name as number one. You don't care who is going to be number two, number three. That is your whole rumor. That is your whole report. This is the report of the Lord. They can trust in the Lord that abide like Mount Zion. That cannot be moved. I shall not be moved. If not, I will leave here. But not now. I will not be displaced out of this place. I will not be removed out of this place. I am number one on the list of those to be displaced. I don't care about any rumored list anywhere. This is the list of the Lord. This is the report of the Lord. Now you hear rumors. You took a shit. They told me, they told me, what is God telling you? Did you trust in the Lord? He said, You will abide like Mount Zion. That cannot be removed. So choose between the report of the Lord and the report of rumors they are telling you. Create your whole list. Create your whole list. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I want Sister Patience from South Africa. Are you there, Sister Patience? I'm there. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to ask your question now. That question that has been burning in your heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. That question that has been agitating in your heart. The Amen. Of that question is here now. Thank you, Papa. And throw that question into this river and see whether there won't be an answer. Ask your question. Thank you, Papa. Um, you are you are right, Papa. The question I had it since yesterday, but I was not sure if it was appropriate. My question was around um, confession of sins, Papa. Especially when it comes to uh, you'd find that sometimes or well, all the times we cannot move forward with uh, with God because of sin, especially sexual sins. So um, my question was uh, around saying. It, how do I know that I have fully confessed the sin? You know, sometimes you, you, you pray and you're in that uh, mood of confessing your sins. At what point or how do I know that I have fully confessed this sin? And um, yes, that was my question, Papa, since yesterday. Thank you, Papa. Hallelujah. I will answer that question by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Number one, the subject of confession of sins has been reduced to mechanical by Christendom. Confess your sin, declare the Lord, and then you will move. Before confession, there must be conviction. Confession without conviction will not bring salvation, will not bring solution. The first thing is conviction. Let me tell you, people don't know the meaning of conviction. You committed a sexual sin today. You confess and you repent and you ask God to forgive you. The next day, 24 hours later, the same person come and began to seduce you again. And you fall into that seduction. Don't you know that there was no conviction? Conviction brings godly sorrow, my daughter. If there is no godly sorrow, there is no conviction. 
You can't be in sorrow and go into fornication the next day. Godly sorrow means Holy Ghost conviction. It is religiosity to go into confession, confession without conviction. Most conviction by the Holy Ghost is there. Every temptation will be despised because you are still mourning. You are mourning, you are sorrowful for what happened. How did that happen? Why did I fall into sexual sin? God, I'm sorry for disappointing you. I feel so ashamed of myself. I cannot call myself spirit filled and go into this one. Ah, may this never happen in my life again. You wrote in the ancient times, the Jews. Do you know how they mourn? They roll in dust and ashes. They put ashes all over their heads. They difficult their happening. They raise their clothes. You see, is it mad? It's not mad. It's conviction that I am worse than the worst of things with what I have just done. You can't be in that state of godly sorrow and be asking yourself, how do I know whether God has forgiven me? Is the only ghost working in you to convict you? And that's what push you into godly sorrow. Everybody that mourn cry. Everybody that mourn do not eat food. You can't be money and be eating with ten fingers. Automatic fasting. Nobody needs to declare fasting for you. Your mouth will refuse to swallow anything. Whether drink or food. That is money. Godless sorrow. Under that condition, no temptation can catch you. Because you are separating your life from every temptation, every affliction. And the point in the course of that money, the point come, you suddenly have peace. When he comes, he shall speak peace to his people. When you have peace, you know that God has forgiven you. God has blotted away your transgression and iniquity by the blood of the Holy Lamb of God. Let no pastor tell you that you are forgiven. He doesn't have the authority. It's between you and the Holy Ghost. It's not your pastor you offended when you committed fornication. It's God. You defy his own holy temple. That's why you return to him. To plead for mercy. And that grace is upon you. But if you now go a week later into the same sin, you just repented last week. That was not conviction. When conviction comes, you will hate that sin with passionate hatred. When true conviction comes, you don't go back to that sin the next week. You don't go back to that sin the next month. You don't go back to that sin the next year. Godly sorrow. Conviction. And it's not me. It's between you and God. It may take you three days. It may take you two days. It may take you five hours. It may take you ten days. I don't know. But in the course of that godly sorrow and mourning, the time we come, God will stretch your heart and he will see that you are truly repentant. He doesn't need to speak by a voice. You will just perceive a peace. A peace that passes all understanding and loves you. The moment you see that peace, you know that the Prince of Peace has come. You know that the Prince of Peace has forgiven you. You know that the Prince of Peace has given you his peace. 
not as the world giveth. He has given you a peace that makes everything cool. And you know that never again. But next day, next week, next month, you go back to the things you were not really competent. So that is how to know. Don't forget, I said something at the beginning of this message. I said it's possible for any Christian to lose the key of faith. If you can lose key to your own house, and you don't know, you go to five places, you don't know which of those places the key got missing. It's possible to lose the key of faith. It's possible to backslide. It's possible to go into fornication and adultery. It's possible. That's why that grace happened. But we will not continue in that sin. It's the continuity in that same sin. That God withdraws his grace completely. That this one is on repentance. Whatever sin the Holy Ghost convicts you of. And you repent. You don't go back there next year. You don't go back there next month. You don't go back there next week. That is the finality. Yeah, none of us is perfect. So we are striving for perfection. We are all striving for perfection. And the grace of God helps us to endure and overcome. Endure and overcome temptations. We are all striving for perfection. But when you continue in that sin, you take the grace of God for granted. That's when a person may be permanently denied from the mansion of grace. Hallelujah. I see somebody else again wants to ask a question there. Sister Corinthia. Sister Corinthia. What nation is that? Sister Corinthia, what nation are you from? Sister Corinthia Frederick, what nation are you from? Sister Corinthia, you are not speaking? Okay. Sister Christine. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's hear your deep question. You can't be here and not have a question. There is something burning in your heart. Open your heart and say it. Uh, I, I, I think what I can say is um, there's a, a light bulb that has gone off in my mind just now when you were speaking. And just as you said, most of the time when we receive or hear rumors or things that are said, the first thing we 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 react to is um, what is being said, and we, we we don't turn it around. We don't take it and turn it around for our good. Yeah. In in so many situations and circumstances, especially in these situations of um, COVID nineteen and how situations have changed in our nation, at our workplaces, in our homes. I think we need to just take that and turn it around for our good. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. God Thank you, sir. You. Thank you, sir. Sister Rosemary Okosa, I think that's from Nigeria. I know Nigerian names. <laughs> Hallelujah. How are you? Fine, sir. What Thank is that you, sir. question? What is that question burning in your heart? Sir, thank you very much, sir. I really appreciate this opportunity. Sir, my question is, I won't put it more or less, I won't take it as a question, but it's kind of a fear. Yeah. Fear, where do I start from? Fear of acceptance. Who is going to accept me for who I am? And um, last yesterday you talked about, uh, that's on last week, strategically positioning yourself, yes. both in the spirit and physical. Uh, some, how is it possible? Because when you are in a situation like 
most of the time you, you don't believe that your God ordained husband is from the church hand. So how is it possible to strategically position yourself both in the physical and in the spiritual? And how do I overcome this fear of am I going to be accepted for who I am with my kids and every other thing? That's just my question and it's really, really burning me up, sir. Thank you, Daddy. God bless you, Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. God did not call us into shame and reproach. He called us into glory and to virtue. If God called us to glory and virtue, we don't need to beg and lobby for the acceptance by any man. The greatest acceptance you need in life is acceptance by God. And God accepts everyone that obeys and plugs to his covenants. You can't be in the covenant and fear the acceptance of the world to accept you for who you are. The question we should ask you, sisters Rosemary, who are you? Are you a child of the Most High God? Are you a covenant child of the Most High that works in the covenant? Are you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Many of us don't know who we are. And we are saying we don't know whether people will accept us. You don't even know who you are. If you know who you are, that you are already accepted. The one with God is the majority. The world may reject you. But once God accepts you, he will guide your path into the path of righteousness. And the second question you ask, I've answered it last week. How to position yourself both physically and spiritually. And I cited an example. Supposing it's not possible, it's not always the truth. Hello, it's not always the case. Supposing the Holy Ghost speaks to you and said, That brother, I'm not talking of many of you, it's your flesh that speaks to you. I'm talking of genuine cases where the Holy Ghost speaks to you that that brother is your husband to be. And now look out for the brother, he's not even look at you, looking at you. Maybe he's even targeting another sister. How do you position yourself in such case? I said, first positioning, spiritual positioning. And I told you last week how to organize that spiritual positioning. We draw from church for two Sundays. Don't even bother to go to church. But don't make the mistake of not going to church and sitting at home. If you don't go to church, you must go to God. What do I mean by going to God? You sit down at home with the book of the law, with prayer and with fasting. Stop religiosity. Position yourself spiritually with God first. Drink deep into the word of God. Pray those things into your life. We saw what my beautiful daughter from Canada did. She gave us, this yesterday I gave the assignment, by midnight today, she has supplied us 50 violent sweet prayer points. From what? From 2 Peter chapter 1. Hallelujah. When you get to that enemy God, that you can sit down on the word of God and he will be speaking through you. And as he's speaking through his word to you, you are hearing his voice. You turn it into prayer. By the time you appear in church, two Sundays after, you must get to the point where we call the point of assurance of faith. You can't sit down at home for two Sundays 
to dig deep into the word of God and not come out with confidence, Holy Ghost confidence. You will even decree as I return back to church after this good Sunday. Let that brother be the first to come and meet me. Let him say he missed me. Let him say, Where have you been? That's how to get confirmation. In that two weeks, God will have to, the heart of kings are in the hands of God to talk with us so ever like a river. In those two weeks, you will have used the scripture and the word of God by faith to turn his heart away from the wrong sister in pursuing. By the time you will appear in church, your testimony will embrace you. That's how to physically and spiritually position yourself. I told you this one before. But well, it's not in all cases. Your husband may not even be in your church. But when you walk with God, like I told you yesterday, if you walk for God, you may not know when he's speaking to you. But when you walk with him, you are always looking and seeking his face. But when you are busy working for him, even when he's talking to you, the noise of the hyperactivity of captivity in church that you are in, you may not even hear his voice. But when you walk with him, you don't jump impossibly into any decision. Don't be like that, my daughter. Who got disappointed by a man that proposed to her, and the next thing is she wants to sell the house where she's living. Impossibleness. So the next thing that, because you are disappointed by a man, the next thing is to sell off wherever you are building. That's not safe. That can't be the Holy Ghost. That can't be, I'm not saying you are free to change accommodation. But God is not telling you to sell it. You went into that relationship based on your flesh. You get disappointed based on the flesh. And you are taking decision now, still on the flesh. You are all repentant. When you work with God, and you don't impossibly jump into any decision without waiting for God to speak to you, when your husband is around, in any area, it may not be in church, it may be at work, it may be anywhere, the Lord will let you know. And the Lord will also bring the man you may not even know. He may be the first one to come and talk to you. So stop. He said, he started today by reading a scripture where let not your heart be troubled. That's where we started from John chapter 14. Your heart is too troubled about whether you'll be accepted or not accepted. The greatest acceptance you need is heaven. Once God accepts you, it makes everybody around you to be accepted. You become attractive and you begin to magnetize only the good testimonies coming to you. Sister Latoya. Sister Latoya. Sister Latoya. Hallelujah. Mr. K, you are from Zambia. Confirm, please. Hello, Sister K. From Zambia. Sister K, from Zambia.
Hallelujah. Why do people put initials? What is the meaning of VFD, please? We are not on social media. We are before the presence of God. If angels are bringing blessings here, they'll be looking for your name. They will not be looking for BFD. I don't know what it means. So please, everybody that is putting initials or alias, change your name to your real name. This is not social media and this is not a dating site. BFD is not in the record of God. It's your name that the angels will, that is bringing your blessings will be looking for. So I'm warning you against this, against next week. Don't put... Carabo. Carabo. Yes, Daddy. Which country are you from? I'm from South Africa. South Africa. Hallelujah. Yeah. What is Amen. that question bothering you? Um, you know, many years ago, I used to work with this lady, and she was an older lady, and she used to say to me, you will never get married, you will never get married, you know? And because of such words, I haven't seen her for years because I decided to cut all ties with her because she was always negative, you know? But uh, I've always prayed and uh, canceled those curses. So I, I'm not sure if I should go to that lady and say to her, revoke those words, or I should just leave it like that because I've cancelled those cases. Sister Carabo, please open to Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, and read it out for us. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. Genesis chapter? Chapter 12, verse 3, Genesis. Genesis, not James. Genesis. Genesis chapter 12, verse, verse 3. 3. Yes. It reads as follows. It says, I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Hallelujah. Amen. Whoever bless you. You have your answer from what? If you are a daughter of Abraham, the blessings of Abraham, the covenant of Abraham covers you. I will bless those who bless you. That older lady that is forcing you, don't let it bother you. Anybody that mistakenly causes you receives multiple and multiplied causes over their life. Are you getting me? It's not the cause that matters. Is what you feel. Mm. If she forces you, you reject it. Are you with me? Yes. Anybody yes. is free to use their mouth. But what did God say concerning you? You are a daughter of Abraham. Amen. I will bless all those who bless you. And I will yes. curse all those who curse you. Oh, yes. So you should have the instead of believing the causes of the lady that says you will not marry, you should believe in the blessings of God. Amen. Thank you, Daddy. She said you will never marry. But God said the blessings of Abraham is the home. <sighs> so that cause, costless, cannot land on your life. Causes don't land accidentally. They land purposely. If you have not done anything worthy of course, the cause go back to sender. Are you with me? I've told you that method has never failed in my life. 
when I get to critical state and I want to achieve something, I will carry a sheet of paper. I begin to draw what I want. Every course canceled, and you will cancel it. Before, you didn't know. Now, you know. You tell her confidently, it's you that is playing with courses. God spoke to me from Genesis chapter 12 that he will bless those who bless me. Since you are the one cursing me, be ready to collect all your courses back. It's a simple statement. It's not a fight. I have plugged my life into the socket of Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. God will bless those who bless me. Now, woman, older woman, you are cursing me that I will never be married. If you are already married, you are about to lose your marriage because I am going into blissful matrimony. Are you with me? Simple. Once you know the God you serve, there is no reason for fear in your life. Shego from Cyprus, I see that uh, you want to ask a question. Olushegu from Cyprus. Yes. Th thank you, Papa. I've I've really learned a lot from what everything I've been hearing since morning. In fact, the reason is as an awesome one. Anyway, because I started early on, like yesterday. Okay. Yes. So I'm following with the questions. Uh, I'm following with the question. Probably they are the questions I wanted to have asked. People have asked. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yes. Sister Chipo, I'm sure you are from Zambia. Yes, I'm from Zambia, sir. What is your question? Um, I'll start with the scenario first. A few yes. days ago, someone told uh, someone told me I, I met this person. Then they were like, um, "When I see you, I want to have sex with you." And then they were like, I'm sure even the men at work, they want to have sex with you. So then they told me I should pray against that spirit. Now, sir, is it my fault? What causes that? Because for me, I don't feel like I want to have sex with those people, but then he's telling me I should pray against that. That is your question. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, 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 I just understood. Mommy, I didn't hear you well. Mommy just interpreted what you are saying. So you are now asking, the question you are now asking is that, is the fault your own? Yes. Is it my fault? And what should I, if, is it right for them to say I should pray against that spirit? No, it's not about the spirit. It's a magnet. It's an invisible magnet that draws the wrong people to you. And then any time that magnet is at work, it doesn't matter whether they were married or unmarried. When you meet a lady and all you want, you don't even know what see of relationship is, I want to have sex with you. Automatically, daughter, it means there's an invisible magnet that is trying them. So what you need to do is to go into a three-day prayer and fasting. Many hands upon your life, your head, as the symbol of your life. Every evil madness, magnetizing the wrong men into my life. Every magnet of sexual immorality, magnetizing men to ask only sex, sex, sex from me. I command you to lose your power. Lose your power. Let the divine magnet that magnetizes favor and God fearing men be activated in my life now. You, the magnet of sexual immorality, you, the magnet of evil that is magnetizing evil men, demanding sex from me, I demobilize you, I deactivate you. Lose your power by the power in the blood of Jesus. Lose your power. You, the magnet of favor. You, the magnet of divine favor, 
I activate you in my life now. Begin to magnetize God fearing and godly men unto me. Every magnet of sexual immorality die in my life. Da, 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 da. Magnet, every evil magnet. Magnetizing evil men. Demanding sex from me. I command you to die now in the name of Jesus. You will the magnet of glory. You will the magnet of blissful matrimony. You will the magnet of divine favor. I activate you now. I activate, activate, activate. I activate you now. Begin to magnetize the right men to me. Not men who are looking for sex, but men who are looking for life companionship. In the name of Jesus. You can't do that for three days. By the fourth day when you get back to work, nobody, no evil man, they will, once you appear, they will scatter. They won't have the courage to stand before you. Look at that scripture that our sister read from Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 to 9. He said, nobody shall be able to stand before you. No evil man shall be able to stand before you to demand for sex. Never again. So it's an invisible madness that draws married men, that draws the wrong kind of persons to you, asking the wrong questions. You can kill that madness and then activate the right madness in your life. And you will see your environment changes. Every time a madness is in an atmosphere, it changes that atmosphere. It's time for the right madness, the divine madness of God to begin to change your atmosphere, to change your environment, and bring and magnetize the right favor, the right blessings into your life, not the forces of people looking for sex. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Sister Tando, what country is that? Botswana, Daddy. Hallelujah. There is a question in your heart. Yes, what is that question? question? My question is about the issue of uh, is it a generational cases or marital cases? In my family, people hardly get married. They don't get married, actually. I was one of the first to be married, and my husband died after seven years of marriage. And now my problem is after we've been praying these prayers, sometimes I keep having these dreams of... Uh, maybe a man trying to fight for me or a man chasing me sometimes and sometimes i uh, i have that thing of feeling that maybe that curse is still following me daddy so i don't know how to have that conviction to say now i'm fully delivered from the yoke of uh, uh, captivity of the family of no marriage like in my mother's house i'm the only one my mother's sisters and everything even my own mom never got married. We're just from different fathers. So that's also my worry that how do I have that uh, conviction that now I'm fully God delivered you for and that. I can get married? God Thank you, Dad. for that question. Let me answer yes. your question. I started this message by telling you that you belong to a covenant of exemption. 99% of people around you are free to do and follow whatever they like. But there is a covenant that exempts you from every affliction. That's how I started. The day you begin to understand that you belong to a special covenant that exempts you from evil. As a man, take it. In his heart. So is he. Because everybody in your family lineage are already thinking like that. They didn't start thinking like that. There may be an ancestral strong man in that lineage that have had a death covenant, that has had an evil covenant with your ancestors. So up to the fourth generation, people who did not commit anything are suffering the punishment. It's possible. Whether you are divorced or married, 
the most important thing is that you just became like unmarried because at the end of the day, the man died. So it is still the same pattern. So what you need to do under such circumstances is to first of all lock yourself up with God and declare a three-day war with prayer and fasting to tackle every ancestral strong man responsible for the collective captivity of your family lineage that nobody successful is successful in marriage. You deal with that ancestral strong man. After you have finished that one, every evil pattern in that same family lineage that is affecting you to bring the blood covenant of Jesus that exempts you from that evil pattern. Are you still with me? Until you do it properly, you won't see the proper results. And I'm telling you the proper way to do it. And what is that proper way? By going boldly before God, before the throne of grace to obtain mercy, challenging the ancestral strong man that holds your family lineage in collective captivity. Break that captivity. And we said, by the end of this, these three weeks, we will fourth week, which is the final week, fifth to seventh of June. Those three days shall be massive ministration. That's why I said three days cannot contain this one. So what we are doing now, we are gathering the ammunitions, the weapons. For the three day fasting and prayer, 5th to 7th of June. So, this one is just warming up, getting ready for the battle, and determining the scope, the length, and breadth of the battle. So, those three days are essentially days of ministrations under the anointing. So, all these issues, we are going to tackle them, but I'm pointing you to the attention of what you need to do. There is a collective captivity over everybody. Break that collective captivity. There is an ancestral strong man in charge supervising that captivity. Deal with that strong man. Or hence, how can one enter? Matthew 12, 29. Except it was by the strong man. I was sharing about the key of faith and the mansion of grace. The same thing applies. For me before we go quickly, I'm watching the time. Check that Matthew 12, 29 and read it out for us. Sister Sandu. Matthew 12, 29. Matthew 12, 29. Read it if you find it. Matthew 12, 29. If anybody finds it, please read it. Matthew 12, 29. Yes, Daddy. Or else how can one enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? Do you know the key word in that scripture you just read? Yeah, no, Daddy. I will tell you that key word. Enter. Did you hear the key word? Enter. Yes. Enter. There is Amen. a house of blissful matrimony. There is a mansion of grace. Of health. How can one enter? The Amen. reason why you couldn't enter into peaceful matrimony and all you had is a dead husband after seven years just to be like other people who have never had those man. Two days a strong man. Oh, yes. How can one end? So there is a dog. There is what? Yes. A dog. 
So what you need is to collect the keys of faith. The keys are in the heart of that dog. The key is in the head of the strong man. Or oh, yes, how can one enter a strong man's house? Your season of strong testimonies has come. But you must defeat the strong man that is hurting your strong testimony. Amen. You must bind the strong man. Every ancestral strong man in my family lineage preventing everybody from marrying, and anybody that marries suffer catastrophe. You that are central strong man, I bind you, I bind you, I bind you with the fetters of fire. Bind, 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 I bind you, I bind you, I bind you with the fetters of fire. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I am no longer your victim. Oh, yes. How can one enter? How do you bind him? You cannot enter. After you finish binding him, you say, I enter. I enter into blissful matrimony. I enter into joy unspeakable. I enter into fruitfulness. I enter into abundance. I enter into plenty. I enter into. You begin to enter. Or you must first bind the strong man. Or let the king. Amen. Open and enter in Jesus' mighty name. You Amen. may handle all this one, but I'm just giving you hints of how to handle it. Matthew 12 29 is enough. If you Amen. must enter into that mansion of grace, you need a key of faith. Collect it from the strong man, find him, and the goods that they are talking of are all the things that have been denied to you. You have the covenant of exemption. Anybody in the family line is free to be a slave of that strong man, but you are accepted by the blood covenant of Jesus Christ. That covenant Amen. exempts you to be a partaker of that evil in Jesus' mighty name. One more question and we round up. One Amen. Did thank you. One more question. Who is the person asking the question? Indiwemi, yes. Bule, which country are you from? Hallelujah. I'm from I'm from UK. Okay, please ask your question. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. My question is: um, we, we spoke about uh, spiritual and physical uh, positioning, and yes, yes, um, yes, yes. if the if the if the gentleman and I physically, you know, position myself and spiritually. Say it again. If the gentleman is abroad, not in the same country as myself. Yes. What is the best way that I can position myself spiritually and also physically? Like Thank I already you, told you, positioning is first in the realm of the spirit. Yes. When you successfully position yourself in the realm of the spirit, because it's the spirit realm that controls the physical realm. Let me tell you what I don't want to mention your name. I don't want to mention your case. I just want to generalize. Okay. Any of you is your flesh that speaks to you, is your feeling. That speaks to you. It's not God. God is not the hotter of confusion. Even if your husband is in another nation, if it is God that ordained him to be your husband to be, that gap be closed by fire. But do you know what many of you do? As soon as you say, ah, you must be my husband. And the next thing you say, ah, I wish I can come and visit you in UK. You now be running at that center to facilitate a visit. It's not your business. You are the helper. You are not the leader. Let him take the initiative. Mm -hmm. He is the one who wants to marry. Don't 
don't send him a time. Otherwise, you become a husband buyer. Let him take the initiative to come and visit you. After you have started, after you have started, and you confirm it's your husband. He must have the means to visit you. He must have the means to marry you. Otherwise, it's not God's choice for you. Amen. It doesn't matter whichever nation. And the twain shall become one flesh. And what God has joined together, let no nations put asunder. If you are the bone of his bone, if you are the flesh of his flesh, you will be joined together. No nation, whether Accra to UK, Accra to London, anywhere. Mm -hmm. No nation can put you asunder. But make sure you are working in the covenant. Make sure you are not a husband by her. Make sure she, he doesn't say he loves you because you are in UK and he's in Accra. I don't know. Just make sure you are working in the covenant. You are working in purity. You are not working after the feelings of your flesh. You are working after the hearing of the voice of the spirit. Then God will bring you coming together to become one flesh to be a reality. Don't venture to sponsor him. Don't venture to send money to him. He should be the other way around. He is the husband to be. He should be the provider. You are just his helper. Let him lead and provide. Then you will follow and help him. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Daddy. Thank Hallelujah. You. Amen. We have gotten to the end of today's session. Session four. I am trusting God. In the next week, Saturday and Sunday, which will be our session five and six, it will be the penultimate gathering, and God will honor His name. But the most important thing, this new week shall bring fortunes into your life. Amen. This new week shall be your week of matrimonial breakthrough. This new week shall be your week of matrimonial testimony. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for every question that agitated the mind of your children. And thank you for divine solution from them. Every area called needs in their life. Convert it to miracle. Convert it to testimony for them. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you for these two hours. Thank you for ministering to us. Thank you for what you are doing in our lives. Thank you for what you are set to do. Even in these remaining days of this month of May. Thank you, O oh God of vengeance. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Only come and speak to us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for today. I believe everyone is blessed. Yeah. We continue to walk in faith and not by sight. And I pray that God will continue to go before us to close every gap between where, where we are now and, and where God wants us to be. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's share the grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 Amen.